One of the best things upon getting to Santiago is having a taste of their Tarta de Santiago. And by far, it's the one dessert associated with Galicia and can be found in every pastry shop in Santiago. If you're new to my channel, in September, I walked the ancient pilgrimage of the Camino de Santiago. I started in France and all the way to Santiago de Compostela in Spain, 800 kilometers which all these ancient pilgrimage lead to the Shrine of St. James, which is at the cathedral in Santiago de Compostela. But you don't have to walk the Camino to have a taste of this tart. Today, I'm going to show you how to make it. And not only is it easy, but it's gluten and dairy free. So let's get going. The recipe we're making today is the authentic registered recipe for the Tarta de Santiago. And for that, you only need five ingredients. We're going to need 250 grams of ground almonds, uh, 250 grams of white uh, sugar, five eggs, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and half the zest of a lemon. You're also gonna need some butter to um, butter up the pan, some parchment paper to put uh, on the bottom of your pan, and um, some icing sugar to then uh, cover the cake and the stencil of the Santiago cross. All you need is a bowl and a whisk and we're gonna break five eggs into the bowl. Next, we're gonna whisk them up a little bit, just break them apart. And we're gonna add the 250 grams of the sugar and whisk that up until it's um, foamy. Just a light foamy mixture. We're not looking to get it all like um, white and foamy. We just wanna make sure that it's all, it's all incorporated. So we're looking for this kind of consistency. Like it's all incorporated, the sugar is all incorporated with the eggs. Next, we're going to add the almond flour. And basically just whisking it until it's all incorporated and there's no lumps in the almond flour I mean and the batter now you can add the um, lemon zest and the teaspoon of cinnamon And this is the consistency you're looking for. It's just a thick batter and there's no lumps in it from the almond flour. So I have here a 10 inch tart pan with the removable bottom, which I've buttered. I also have my parchment paper that I'm gonna put in the bottom. If you don't have a tart pan, you can use the 10 inch 
um, cake pan with the removable sides. Uh, this is also, it's 25 centimeters, just in case you're wondering. So now we're going to take our batter and pour it into our tart pan. Traditionally, the Tarta de Santiago is not a high cake, so you want to bake it in a tart pan or a bigger kind of um, cake pan, not a high, like, so you wouldn't use an eight inch that it comes up high, you want it to be low. Okay, here we are. And we're just gonna tap it a bit and get rid of any little bubbles that formed. So our cake is nice and beautiful. And now it's gonna go in the oven at 350 for 25 to 30 minutes. And then we're gonna check on it. Oh, I like to put the tart pan on a cookie sheet. Uh, that way in case, uh, because it's a removable bottom, in case it decides to leak out. Cake is done. Uh, it's been in the oven for 25 minutes. I'm gonna take it out. I already tested it with the toothpick, toothpick, and it's perfect. And now we're gonna let it cool completely. I think the hardest part of this process of making the Tarta de Santiago is cutting out the cross of St. James, which we're then gonna put on top of the cake. And I'm going to leave the PDF of the uh, St. James cross in the description of the video. So now that the Tarta de Santiago is completely cool, we're gonna do the finishing touches, which is put our uh, stencil of the Santiago cross, uh, which was a symbol of the Order of Santiago in the 12th century, which was a religious and military order. So we're going to place the stencil on the tart and then uh, dust it with icing sugar. I have the um, tarta in, on top of a uh, cooling tray and in the cookie sheet. And now I'm going to take the icing sugar and um, dust the cake. And I got some little clumps. And now we're going to gently remove the stencil to reveal, oh no. Whoops. And now that our Tata de Santiago is completely cooled, it's time to have a piece. I'm just waiting for some hot water for a tea. I was gonna make uh, orange pico, but just realized I have no milk. So this is a chamomile tea. So let's cut in. I just love this tart. It's so light and airy. And perfect to have after a meal. I still remember getting to Santiago and then having lunch with my parents. And for dessert, we had a slice of Tarta de Santiago. I think I will remember that forever. 
Let me know uh, what are some of the things you ate while on the Camino that, um, that you remember and that maybe you've tried to make at home. And if you can guess what recipe I will be making next on the channel, leave a comment down below. I know that this is completely uh, different content than what I usually put out, um, but I thought it would be kind of cool. And also I think something that I want to incorporate more. Let me know how you feel about that. And thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.